Okay, so now let's try to formulate our MCNF problems as um, mathematical programs. So for this problem, um, let's use the example we just saw as the main example. For this kind of problem, as we mentioned, what we want to decide is the flow size for each arc, right? We need to decide for each arc what's the amount we want to send through. So xij will be our notation for flow size of arc ij, where ij is an arc. For example, you don't have a variable 1,4. x1,4 does not exist in this example because there is no such arc. But there is one variable x12. With that, our objective function is very clear. It's the minimization problem that we minimize the total cost. Okay? For link 1, 2, the cost is 4 times x12 because 4 is the unit cost for each um, for each unit of flow. And for x13 three is 3. Okay? So by collecting all the uh, costs on each flow, uh, on each um, arc, we can get this minimization objective function. One constraint is certainly there is the capacity constraint. x12 cannot be greater than 15, x13 cannot be greater than 20, and so on and so on. One last thing is the flow balancing constraints, and that means for each node, flow in equals flow out. For a supply node, we may put the supply quantity at the left hand side. This is the amount of flow in. Okay? Huh. And here we have flow outs. For node 1, 25 is the supply quantity. And then we count how many units flow out. Or the amount flow out must be exactly 25. For transshipment nodes, it's the same thing. For example, for node 2, the only flow in is through arc 1, 2, okay? And then there are three flow outs. So that's why x1, 2 must be equal to x2, 3 plus x2, 4 plus x2, 5, okay? 2, 3, 2, 4, and 2, 5. For node 3, is the same thing. Finally, for demand nodes. For demand nodes, we put the demand quantity at the right-hand side because it's something like a flow out. So for example, for node 4, uh, we have 2 flow in, 2, 4, and 3, 4, 2, 4, and 3, 4. And then there are 2 flow outs. One is the demand, and the other is arc 4, 5. Okay, arc 4, 5. So one thing to keep in mind is for demand, uh, demand nodes, there may still be uh, outgoing arcs. And also for uh, supplies, there may be incoming arcs. Uh, that's are all possible. So, as long as we satisfy all the flow balancing constraints, we can make sure that all the demands are satisfied, right? Uh, because having enough amount of units uh, sending into those demand nodes tells us that the demand, 10 units, 15 units, are satisfied. And we, it's also very clear that for all these equalities to be satisfied, the total supply must equal to total demand. Okay. Otherwise, it is impossible to really uh, satisfy everything, uh, uh, all of them. So an LP formulation can be done by simply collecting all of them. This is our objective function, and then we have five uh, equality constraints for flow balancing, and then uh, two sets of constraints for each arc. One is the non-negativity, the other one is um, upper bounds. Some uij may be infinity in general, okay? And here we simply write all of them down for simplicity. One question we may have is about model size. As we may observe, the number of nodes is the number of equality constraints, okay? Or the number of nodes. Here, 5 is the number of equality constraints because for each node, we have flow in equals flow out constraint. We have flow balancing constraint, and that's an equality. And the number of arcs is the number of variables here. <coughs> For each arc, we need to have a variable deciding how much, how many units to send through. Okay, 
The number of arcs is also the number of upper bound constraints and the non-negativity constraints or lower bound constraints. Oh. Uh, as a reminder, in general, we may have non-zero or positive lower bounds. Okay, in general, that's allowed. Uh, here, we ignore it for simplicity. One of the most important thing that you need to observe is that in each column, oh, and more precisely, in each column of those equality constraints, there are exactly one one and one minus one. Okay, oh, to say this, for this column, there is one one and one minus one as coefficients. For this column, oh, there is one one and one minus one, and so on and so on. For all those columns, there are exactly one one and one minus one. It turns out that this is always true. And why? Well, it's simply because each arc, oh, each arc has two endpoints. And for endpoint one, it's a outgoing arc. Then for endpoint two, it's an incoming arc. Okay, so that's why for one node. Oh, for one node, this is outgoing, and then for the other node, it's incoming. Okay, that's why there must be one one and one minus one. One arc must belong to two flow balancing constraints in the different directions. Okay, so we know this is always true, and it will be useful later. So our knowledge suggests that the flow size should not be set to integers. If you still have uh, uh, those memories, we set xij to be non-negative, and we did not say that xij must be integers. Okay, oh, we did not say this. Why? Uh, if we do so, in general, the problem becomes an integer program, and we need to use something like branch and bound to solve that problem. Even one integer variable will greatly complicate the whole solution process. And there are so many arcs. If all the arcs are required to be integer variables, then the solution may take really a long time, in general. Right? Oh. We use, uh, in general, uh, this is just a review for integer programs. We use integer variables typically for the two following reasons. First, uh, when approximation by rounding is not acceptable, or when binary variables are required uh, for modeling uh, if else or 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 uh, fixed charge problems okay in these two cases we really need integer variables otherwise typically we relax integer constraints even though we are sending tables chairs cars people whatever so now there is a question, what if we must get an integer solution? Is there any way for doing that? The good news is for MCNF problems, oh, MCNF problems are important because of the following reason. Integer solutions will be obtained for free. What does that mean? As long as the supply quantities and the upper bounds are all integers, then the solution of the LP, or the LP in the previous slides, must give an integer solution. Oh wow, so that's the first time you see this kind of property, right? I give you an LP, and as long as it satisfies some conditions, then it must generate an integer solution. Sounds very good. And with that, if we formulate it as an IP, then the LP relaxation must give an integer solution if that problem is feasible. Okay, so that means the coefficient matrix uh, must have some properties, otherwise, we don't have this. Okay, in general, certainly this is not true. Uh, in general, this is not true, otherwise, we don't need branch and bound. Okay, now uh, it's possible that the LP relaxation gives fractional solutions, but with MCNF problems, because the coefficient matrix is so special, we must get integer solutions. Below, I'm going to tell you why. We need uh, several things. We need to have the definition of unimodular matrices. A square matrix is called unimodular if its determinant is 1 or minus 1.
With that, we define totally unimodular matrices. It's just a matrix whose all the square submatrices are either singular or unimodular. So that means given any square submatrix, its determinant is either 1 or 0 or minus 1. That's the meaning. If that happens for all the square matrices and square submatrices, then it's totally unimodular. Some examples, or you may want to verify. A is totally unimodular. Given any submatrix, uh, submatrix like this, or, or even one single unit, or, or even this 3 by 3 submatrix, the determinant is either 0 or 1 or minus 1. But for B, it's not true. Uh, for B, the submatrix that violates this condition is the matrix itself. Uh, determinant, determinant of B is just not 1 or minus 1 or 0. Or it's negative 2. Okay? Uh, so according to this definition, given any matrix, you are able to check whether it's totally unimodular or not. Okay? Uh, so with totally unimodular matrices, we're going to give you a property uh, in the next video. Thank you.